Integration by parts is a method to help compute some antiderivatives. It is an easy-to-use algorithm to make things a bit simpler and a bit more systematic than pure guess and check. In the next video, I will present a few examples of how to use it. However, in this video, I want to explain where the formula for integration by parts comes from and why it works. As motivation, I will first investigate one example by pure guess and check before I obtain the general formula. I want to integrate x times e to the x with respect to x. Since I don't have any more tools for now, I'm just going to try to guess the right answer. So I am looking for a function whose derivative is x e to the x. My first guess is going to be x e to the x itself. I know this is not the right answer but I am hoping it is related to the right answer. Why? Well, the derivative of x e to the x is, let's use product rule, 1 times e to the x, when I differentiate the first term, plus x times e to the x, when I differentiate the second term. And now look at what happened. The derivative I want is the second term in this sum. This gives me an idea. If I can find a second function whose derivative is exactly e to the x, then all I have to do is subtract the two functions. And then the derivative will be e to the x minus e to the x plus x e to the x, which is exactly what I wanted. I think this will work. And in fact, finding a function whose derivative is e to the x is easy. Uh, that's just e to the x. So the function I was looking for is x e to the x minus e to the x. Great, that is my antiderivative. Well, that is one antiderivative. To get all of them, I need to add an integration constant. Let's think about what just happened. I wanted to find a function with a certain antiderivative. Using the product rule, I could find a function whose derivative was what I wanted, plus an extra term, and then I had to subtract a second function whose derivative was the extra term. This process is basically the idea behind integration by parts. Integration by parts gives us a formula to do the same thing in a more systematic way, without so much guess and check, but it is the same idea. To learn what this new formula is, let's have a closer look at the product rule. The product rule says, that the derivative of the product of two differentiable functions, f times g, is the sum of two terms, f prime times g plus f times g prime. This is a product rule that we know very well. It is a rule about derivatives. Every rule about derivatives can be converted into a rule about antiderivatives. I can instead say that an antiderivative of f prime g plus f g prime is f times g. That means exactly the same. Unfortunately, this equation as a method to compute antiderivatives directly as it is written won't be very useful. It won't come in handy that often. What are the odds that I am trying to compute an integral that the function is the sum of two terms and that they fit exactly this pattern? That won't happen often. However, I can rewrite it in a more convenient way. I can use linearity of integrals to write the left-hand side as the sum of two integrals. And if I isolate one of them, I get that the integral of f g prime is f g minus the integral of f prime g. Notice that I am no longer writing the integration constant. In this last identity, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side contain a family of antiderivatives, which already carries an arbitrary additive constant. So the constant is already included on both sides, and I do not need to write it explicitly. This identity is going to be more useful. It allows me to transform one integral into another integral, and hopefully the second integral will be easier to compute than the first. I'm going to call this a theorem. To write it properly, I need to introduce my notation. f and g are functions, and I need to assume they are differentiable. This is what we call the formula for integration by parts. However, I think it should be called the backwards product rule, because I took the product rule, which is a differentiation rule, and I wrote it backwards to convert it into an anti-differentiation rule. Before I move into an example of how to use this, there is an alternative way to write this identity, which is also very common. 
Here's the theorem again. I'm going to introduce some notation. I will give the name u to f of x, and I will call v g of x. Then I also have their differentials. du will be f prime of x dx, and dv will be g prime of x dx. This is the same convention I introduced in the video on the substitution rule. Like I said then, I am thinking of this just as notation. There is a way to give a meaning to the differentials using so-called differential forms, but that is beyond the scope of this course, so I won't do it. It is just notation for now. With this notation, I can rewrite the identity for integration by parts as follows. The first integrand, f of x g prime of x dx, with the new notation, becomes u dv. Then the product f of x g of x, with a new notation, becomes u times v. And finally, the second integrand, f prime of x g of x dx, with a new notation, becomes v du. And that's it. The last identity, integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du, is probably the most common way to write the formula for integration by parts, because it is compact, it is easier to remember, and it is also easy to use. But this has all been very theoretical. We need an example before concluding this video. I am back to the example I used to begin this video. I want to integrate x times e to the x with respect to x. But this time, instead of guess and check, I want to use my new formula for integration by parts. I want to interpret this integral as the integral of u dv, and then transform it into another integral that is hopefully easier. If I'm going to use integration by parts, I have a choice of what to call u and what to call dv. I have a product here, x times e to the x. Remember, I want my second integral to be easier than the first. Let's look at the pieces one by one. x. If I take the derivative of x, it will be simpler. If I take the antiderivative, it will be harder. e to the x. I don't care if I take the derivative or the antiderivative, it stays the same. Notice that the function in u will be replaced with its derivative, and the function in dv will be replaced with its antiderivative. So, if my goal is for the second integral to be as simple as possible, it's a good idea to choose u to be x, and dv to be e to the x dx. If u is x, then du is dx. And if dv is e to the x dx, then v is simply e to the x. Okay then, what happens to my integral? It becomes u times v, which is x e to the x, minus the integral of v du which is e to the x dx. And this is good, this is progress. As expected, the new integral is easier than the original integral. So this was a good idea. And in fact, I know what an antiderivative of e to the x is. It is simply e to the x. And don't forget the integration constant. And that's my final answer. You should have a bit of a sense of deja vu. What I've done is the same thing I did earlier at the beginning of the video except then I used mass more guess and check, and this time it was faster and more systematic using the formula for integration by parts. If I want to get some intuition about when is integration by parts a good idea, and in general, which examples work well, and what I should choose as u and what I should choose as dv, then I should work through a few examples. That is what I will do in the next video.